نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الف لام احسب الناس و یترکو و یقولو آمنا و ہم لا یفتنون ولقد فتن الذین من قبلهم فلیعلمن اللہ الذین صدقو ولیعلمن الكاذبین صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقدتم من لسانی یفقہو قولی دس سورة الانکربود is most important and most profound سورة of the قرآن regarding a special subject and that special subject is the persecution that comes to the Muslims and Mominin at the hands of of the disbelievers they are tortured they are persecuted they are given all sorts of pains in that condition what the Muslims have to do so this is actually to give you a historical background this persecution from the unbelievers or disbelievers is absolutely natural and logical because people were living and they were under a system and there was no difference among them they were worshipping their idols and so and so forth everything no conflict suddenly a person stood up and he said it's all wrong what you are worshipping wrong false gods you have gone astray so there was naturally a reaction who are you to say this we are following our forefathers we were living in peace you have started a conflict so this was normal natural logical inevitable but there are two stages of this persecution which came to the muslims at the hands of the disbelievers for the first three years the persecution was only verbal no beating no physical persecution verbal and it was wholly and solely focused on the person of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has gone crazy he is majnoon he has been possessed by some evil spirit he is a poet he is taking dictations from someone and then saying that this revelation has come to me from Allah all such things were said to him so the persecution was verbal and centered on the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because if they could break his willpower, then there was no need of saying anything to anybody else. The whole movement would have died down. So they tried their best for three long years. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam persevered. And now they saw that his call is getting response from our society. And they were very much perturbed about two sections of the society. The youth, number one. Our youth is assembling around him. So it is going to be a very bad omen for our culture, our system. This is our hope of future, this youth. Who is Osman, a young man of the house of Umayyah. The big, who is Musa bin Umayyah. Who is Saad ibn Abi Waqqas? Who is Ali? All this. So number one, their own youth and number two, the slaves. The slaves were the oppressed people. A, a, a section of the society which was exploited like anything. They had no rights whatsoever. A master who owned a slave could kill him at any time, at his sweet will. He didn't have to answer to somebody. Well, just if you have a goat, you can sacrifice it wherever you like. Eat its meat. She belongs to you. Okay. And he is your servant or maid servant or his slave or the slave girl. You do anything. You can kill them. So when this sec section of the society was now rallying around Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for them it meant that the fire is now reaching the go down of the gunpowder. It can at any time explode. 
So now they started the physical persecution from the beginning of the fourth year after the coming of Wahi to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This persecution, this torture, increased in its intensity every day, and it reached its climax in the fifth year after the beginning of Wahi. The youth were being beaten; they were tied in chains in the homes, kept hungry. The slaves were beaten like anything, anything. What happened to Bilal? What happened to Khabab and Arath? What was happening to the slave girls? To Sumaya, she was tortured and and killed and murdered, and her husband Yasir tortured and killed and murdered, and son Ammar he was only spared when he said something, you know, accepting kufr by his mouth to save his life. But then, you know, he repented much of it. So these were the conditions in which one of the Sahaba is Khabab bin Al Arath رضي الله تعالى. He was a blacksmith by profession, but didn't have any support in the society. Not a slave, but a person who had no support, no help. So now, to him, you know, they subjected to the worst type of persecution. Fire was kindled, then the live coal was spread on the ground he was called and said take off your shirt he took it off lie down all these cinders burning cinders so now the skin of the back got burnt and then the fat in the back it got melted and with it the wire and this it was finished and cooled so such was this persecution which was going on at that time in this background, Khabab al Arth says, it's a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, that I saw Muhammad Sallallahu he was sitting in the shade of a wall of Kaaba, and he had taken support of some cloth with him. So I went to him and I said, Ya Rasulullah, O Masjid of Allah, don't you pray for us? Don't you invoke Allah's help? Allah's forgiveness for us, His help should come. These people should be stopped. Now these things, these persecutions are becoming unbearable for us. How much can we bear? But at this, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not happy to listen this. He rather, you know, angrily he said, before you there were people who came to believe and they were burnt alive. There were other examples. When their flesh was taken off from their bones with combs of iron. There were others who were first of all made to sit in a pit in the earth, in the land. And then you know a saw was put on the head and started sawing the body until they divided it into two. These things happened to those who were before you, who accepted and responded positively to the call of the messengers of Allah of their times. But they persevered. They endured everything patiently. Now you are making haste. You have to endure. But a time will surely come when a person will go from Hazramot to Sana'a, the whole breadth of the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. And he will be fearing none else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that time is to come. Presently you have to and you have to bear with patience and perseverance. So this is the subject matter of this surah. Alif Lam Meem Ahaseb and Naswa Yutraku. Did the people think that they will be let alone? Ayakulu Abanna. Only on saying that we believe. And they will not be tested. This test and trial, that proves whether you really believe or not believe. It has been our practice, permanent practice in the past, that we have tested and tried those who were before them. So Allah will definitely make known who are saying truly when they say we believe. And 
and he will expose those who are wrongfully saying it, saying it only with their lips, not from their hearts, who are telling a lie. Now on the second side, these two ayat are of sort of, you know, a rebuke you may call it. Why? Why this haste? Why complaining? You have to bear these things. But now, on the other side, to be lenient to those people, am hasib al lazina ya manun sayyat, or do they who are doing evil things to our bondsmen, Abu Jahl, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, Umayya ibn Khalf, who is beating Bilal like anything, do they think an yasbiquna? That they will escape our punishment. Sa ma A very bad opinion that they have. They will not be able to escape our punishment. Our punishment will come. At this time, we have allowed them. So that actually we are testing those who believe, those who say we believe in Allah. We are testing them. But this test is coming through the hands of Abu Jahl. Through the head of Umayyah ibn Khalf. But this is our testing. We are testing them. But a time will come when we shall seize these people who are doing these wrong things to our bondsmen. Man kana yarju liqa Allah fa inna jalallahi laat. Another consolation. Whosoever hopes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should rest assured that that time of meeting with Allah definitely will come. Don't think, O oh Muslims, maybe that time doesn't come. We suffer for nothing. If, they have, if that day of judgment is not to come, what did we suffer for? No, they should rest, rest assured. Man kana yarju Allah. You are bearing all these hardships. Why? For Allah. For the day of judgment. For the reward of the hereafter. Don't let shaitan, Satan, whisper into your minds, Maybe that day doesn't come. Then what are you doing? Man kana yarju liqa Allah fa inna jalallahi laat wa huwa samiul alim and he is all listener, all knowing. He knows what is being done to Bilal. He knows what is being done to Sumayya and Yasir razi Allah ta'ala anhu. He knows it. And whatever their lips are saying when Bilal was being beaten at the time, he used to say, Ahadun, Ahad, Ahad, Ahad. I believe in only one. I am not ready to accept anyone else. So Allah is listening. A bondsman of mine is testifying to my oneness. Although he is being beaten, you know, like animals. Woman jahad jahadun in nafsi. And then the warning. Whosoever is striving for us, he is striving for himself. He shouldn't think that he is doing some favor to us. The benefit will be his. He will be recompensed. He will be rewarded. He will be declared successful on the day of the judgment. He will be sent to heaven and paradise and to the gardens of bliss. So whosoever doing, whatever he is doing, he is doing for himself. Don't think you are doing any favor to me. A very stern warning. And this is very important for any person who is working for the deen of Allah. He shouldn't see or feel that I am doing something good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are doing good to yourself. Minnat maneh ke khidmat e sulta hami kuni. Minnat shanas azu. Don't think that you are doing a favor when you are serving the king. You should acknowledge his favor to you that he has given you permission to serve him. This permission to serve him is the bliss. Verily, Allah is free from all worlds, free from all needs. He is self-sufficient in every way. Now again a consolation, a note of consolation. 
and a note of warning, alternating. And these two things, you know, they are very important for training and teaching. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنَا كَفْرَنَّا عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَحْسَنَ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As to those who believe and do good deeds, we shall definitely, without any doubt, equip them their mistakes and their evils, vices, remit for them. And we shall definitely, surely, without any doubt, reward them, recompense them in the best what they used to do. These are our promises. These promises will be fulfilled. But you have to prove that you deserve these promises. Now there was a problem especially for the youth. The parents used to say to them, well, we brought you up. Mother would say, I gave birth to you. I settled you. We looked after you, we fed you, we brought you up, and now you are giving us, giving up our religion. You say our religion is wrong, our forefathers were wrong, this is our right on you, you must follow us. This is the biggest problem for any revolutionary work, because usually the response comes for a revolutionary work from the youth. But then they are under their parents, elders, and they say, we have right over you. And especially a person who has believed in Muhammad sallallahu he is definitely of a good nature. A good nature, natured young man must be very respectful to his parents. So that was the dilemma. Verily, we enjoined upon man to be respectful to his parents. But if they pressurize you, if they make jihad against you, now you just note this word jihad, jahadaka. For whom? For the mushrik parents, the unbelieving parents. When they are pressurizing their sons, you must remain in the religion of your fathers and forefathers. This is jihad. They are doing jihad in the way of their false gods. In the way of or for the cause of their false religion. That you associate with me. That for which you have no knowledge. Don't obey them. To me you have to return all of you. You as well as your parents. And then I will inform you what you had been doing. And what was the position of your parents. When they ask you to associate with me anybody or anything. As for those who come to believe and do good deeds, we shall definitely, surely, without any doubt, admit them and make them enter among our righteous people. Here's the hint, you know. If you have become a Muslim, you have come to believe in Muhammad. And your parents have turned you out from your house, from their house. You have been cut from your family. But don't think you have cut only. You have been cut from those. But Allah has joined you with Muhammad And the believers. A new brotherhood is taking, coming into existence. A new family. So you are cut from there. But you are joined here. This new brotherhood. This new family. This is the bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ فَإِذَا أُوزِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعَلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَذَابِ اللَّهِ And there are among people those who say we believe in Allah but فَإِذَا أُوزِيَ فِي اللَّهِ But when they are persecuted in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala جَعَلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَذَابِ اللَّهِ They Take the persecution of people as if it were Allah's chastisement. They are so much fearful as they should have been fearful of the chastisement of Allah. It's only a test coming in the way of Allah through the hands of the unbelievers. And if the help comes from your Lord and you are victorious, then they will come and say, 
نہ یقول نہ انا کن نہ معکو وی ور آلسو ود یو سو وی وانٹ ٹو ہیو دی شیئر ان دی بوٹی ان وٹ ایور یو ہیو ارن اول ایس اللہ بے عالم بے معافی صدور العالمین سو وٹ ڈو دے تھنک is Allah not very well aware of what is in the chests of the people. We had read in Surah Al-Hajj, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنْ أَسَابَهُ خَيْرٌ الْمَدْنَا بِهِ وَإِنْ أَسَابَتُ فِتْنَةٌ الْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ خَسْرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ This is the further stage, more advanced stage of the same disease. We read there, there are people from among people, who want to worship Allah, but alongside the coast. They don't want to go to the main current. They don't want to take the risk of their lives. So if there is peace and contentment, okay, they are going with you. But if there is some fitna, if there is test, some testing and trial comes, then they fall down on their faces. Khasrat dunya wal akhirah. This is the loss of this world as well as of the hereafter. Now this disease, when it advances, one says, I believe in Allah, I believe in the hereafter. But when there is persecution, they fall down. But if the help of Allah comes, they will also come and say, we were with you. So does Allah not know what is in the minds and hearts and chests of the worlds. Again, you know it is repeated. Surely Allah will make it manifest who is a real believer. And Allah will expose who is a munafiq, who is a hypocrite. This is the only place in the whole of Makki Quran where this word munafiq appears. This disease actually that belongs to the Madani period. But the seeds are here also. The plant we see in the Bakki days, Madani days, but the seeds are here. If you are weak of will, weak of character, your will power is not strong enough. You think this is correct, you adopt it, but when there is some persecution, you go back. This is the disease. And this when advances further becomes nifaq. وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّبِعُوا سَبِيلَنَا Now this is the advice of the elders to the youth. And those who disbelieve, they say to those who have come to believe amongst their youngsters, youth, اتَّبِعُوا سَبِيلَنَا Go on following our path. Well, we are your elders. We have more experience of this world. We have more experience of the people. There have been other people also who stand up and call the youth to this way or that way and ruin their careers, ruin their futures. So we advise you. You should keep on following us. And if you are very fearful that Allah will Bring you to the book. We shall. We shall wear your weight. Let it be on us. We will be responsible to answer on your behalf. And really they are not going to bear from their own sins anything. Surely they are liars. They are telling lies. Surely, they will be bearing their own burdens of sins. Additional burdens of sins along with their burden. Why? Because they tried these youth to take them astray. So they are adding to their burdens. But if some young man takes their advice and goes back, well, his burden will not be shared by anybody. He will be recompensed in full. And they will surely be questioned on the day of judgment. What, what things they were forging that we shall be responsible for you. 
دیر نو بڈی کین بی ریسپانسبل فار اینی بڈی ایلس ایوری بڈی کل ہم آتی ہے یوم القیامت فردا ایوری بڈی ہیز ٹو کم دیئر ایز اے سنگل ہیومن پرسن ریسپانسبل فار ہم سیلف نو بڈی ول بی ایبل ٹو بی ٹو ریسپونڈ فرام ہز سائڈ نو دس فرسٹ سیکشن آف سورا آئی ٹول یو موسٹ پروفاؤنڈ فار پیپل ہو ہیو لیٹ می یوز دا ورڈ ریولیوشنری کانسیپٹ آف دین an activist concept of deen not a static a dynamic concept of deen deen is the total system of life deen wants its superiority and it is the demand of deen from those who say we believe to strive hardest to whatever they have to spend for that to make the deen of allah supreme these three sentences number one those who think that our islam is not a religion regarding only dogma and creed and some modes of worship it's a whole system of life number one number two the system of life demands its domination it is deen only when it dominates when it doesn't dominate when you are living in america you are living under the american system the system of america Only you can say prayers and you can build mosques. That's all. Law, the whole political system, the whole economic system, the whole social system, the whole social values, even the family laws. You have to accept theirs. So in this condition, if you accept this condition passively, you have no iman whatsoever. No iman whatsoever. Please listen. If you have reason, say to it. If you accepted it, no, no, Iman. You have to live here as a fighter against this system. To try to change this system, to topple over this system, to establish the deen of Allah. And if you say we are a minority, small minority, look to Muhammad. He was all alone when he started the mission. He didn't have any ummah already present in Arabia. He made his ummah one by one. Even after ten years of hardest labor, he couldn't bag more than hundred and twenty-five people. Ten years of hardest labor of no less person than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he couldn't bag more than hundred and twenty-five people. So this is, and for those people who agree with me in these three points, Islam is Deen, not Mazhab or religion, in the you know narrow sense of the word limited sense of the word number 2 it demands its domination number 3 is the basic duty fundamental duty of everyone who says he believes in islam to strive his hardest to his utmost to devote whatever he has to the struggle to make the deen of allah supreme and now if during that struggle persecution comes losses comes you have to go hungry فتن من قبل فلا يعلم ان الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلم من الكاذبين ولا يعلم ان الله الذين امنوا ولا يعلم من المنافقين we shall differentiate them who are the true believers and who are the hypocrites only they are saying we are muslim only with the tips of their tongues not from the depths of their hearts now after this first section of this surah three sections are just similar to the other makki surahs the stories and news Ambaul Rusul and story of the prophets. Well, Akad Arsal na Nuhan ila Qomi, and we had sent Nuh to his nation. For Abu Safihim, Alfa Sanatim ida Khamsi na Ama, he remained with them for a thousand years, minus fifty years, nine hundred and fifty years. For Akad Hum Tufan wa Hum Zalimun. So finally, the deluge seized them while they were evil doers. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَأَصْحَابَ السَّفِينَةِ 
وی ڈلیورڈ ہم اینڈ دی پیپل ہو ور ود ہم ان دی آرک وجالنا آیت العالمین اینڈ وی میڈ دیٹ آرک اے سائن فار آل دی ورلڈ دس سائن ول اپیئر سم ڈے اینڈ وی شیل بی ایبل ٹو فائنڈ دیٹ دس از دی آرک ریسٹنگ ہیئر آن دس ٹاپ آف دس ماؤنٹین وہ ابراہیم اس کال علی قوم ہی اینڈ وی سیٹ ابراہیم آلسو وین یو سیٹ ٹو ہز پیپل احمد اللہ و تقو ہو ورشپ اللہ فیئر ہم ظالم خیر اللہ دس از بیسٹ فار یو اف یو ہیو دی ریئل نالج ان دما تابدون من دون اللہ اوسان بٹ یو آر ورشپنگ ایکسیپٹنگ اللہ دے آر دی آئیڈلس تخلقون ہو افقا اینڈ یو ہیو کریٹڈ دیم یو ہیو انوینٹڈ دیم اے لائی ان دا لذین تابدون من دون اللہ لا یبلقون لکم رزقا ویریلی دوز ہوم یو آر ورشپنگ besides Allah, they can't give you any sustenance, any food. فَبْتَغُوا إِنْدَ اللَّهِ دِسْقُ So try and seek the sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعْبُدُوهُ And worship Him. وَشْكُرُوا لَهُ And be thankful to Him. إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ To Him you will be returned. وَإِنْ يُكَذِّبُوا And then if you if you belie فَقَدْ كَذَّبَ قُمَبُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ So many other generations and nations also belied before you. وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَى الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And on our messenger there is nothing binding except conveying the message. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْ كَيْفَ يُبْدِ اللَّهُ الْخَلْقَ سُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ Don't they observe how Allah originally starts a creation and then He, then he recreates it, repeats it. And this is easier on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To create something for the first time must be more difficult than repeating the creation. Whatever you do for the first time is difficult, but to repeat it is easier. Say to them, travel in the land and try for your, and see for yourself how Allah creates, originates creation. ثم اللہ ينشئل نشط الواخرہ دن اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی will bring forth the later creation that is of the hereafter ان اللہ علا کل شہد قدیر ویریلی اللہ is powerful and able to do whatever he likes یعظم من یشا و یرحم من یشا he will chastise whomsoever he wishes and he will have mercy on whomsoever he likes وَإِلَيْهِ تُقْلَبُونَ and to him you will be turned back وَمَانْ تُمِ مُوَجَزِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ You are not going to defeat him in the earth. وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Nor in the heaven. وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن وَلِيِّ وَلَا نَصِيرِ And you don't have any other protector and helper except Allah. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَلِقَائِهِ أُولَائِكَ يَأَيْسُوا مِن رَحْمَتِ As for those who disbelieve and reject our revelations and who disbelieve in meeting us They are the people who are, who are absolutely no hope of my mercy. وَأُولَائِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ For them is the painful chastisement. فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ But the answer of his nation, nation of Ibrahim, was only this, إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا اُقْتُلُوهُ اُحَرِّقُوهُ Kill him or burn him alive. فَأَنْجَابُ اللَّهُ مِنَ النَّارِ But Allah saved him. And delivered him from the fire. In the fizalik al ayat ili qomi yuminun. Verily, in this are the signs for those who believe. Wa kala in the matta khastum in dunin lahi ausanan mawadda ta bayin ikum fil hayat in dunya. This is very important. And Ibrahim said, "Those whom you have taken for yourselves idols instead of Allah, it is out of affection between you in this life of this world. What does it mean? There is a community." They have some culture, some philosophy, some system. Somebody says, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And he is convinced that whatever he is saying is correct. But he keeps clung, clinging to that old system. Why? Well, my relatives are there. My friends are there. If I am a shopkeeper, my customers are there. How can I leave them? If I leave their religion, if I leave their beliefs, if I leave their system, I am cut off from them. Although they are convinced in their hearts that this is wrong 
and this happens with different organizations and movements working for Islam. For example, supposedly some big mistake has been committed and now somebody says you have committed a mistake and you are convinced, yes, but unless the whole party accepts, unless the system keeps intact, how can I go away? I'll be alone. The love between you in the life of this world is the basis that you keep on clinging to these false ideas and beliefs and, and the wrong ways. Summa yawm al qiyamate yakfuru ba'dukum bi ba'zin. Then on the day of judgment, each one of you will deny each other, accuse each other. It was due to you that I kept clinging to that party or that system or that philosophy. And you will deny each other and curse each other. Your abode will be fire. And you will have no helpers for you. So Lut, his nephew, he believed in him. And he said, well, I am going to emigrate towards my Lord. Innahu huwa al-Aziz al-Hakim. Verily, he is all-powerful and having all the wisdom. Wa wahabna lahu Ishaq wa Yaqub, and we bestowed upon him Ishaq, son, and Yaqub, the grandson. Wa jalna fi zuriyatihi nubuwa tawal kitab, and we assigned the prophethood and the book among the progeny of Ibrahim. After Ibrahim, no prophet, no messenger of Allah has come in this world except. In the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Either the progeny of Ishaq through Yaqub, then Ismail, and through him Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then Madian, because Ibrahim had a third wife also, Qatura. And there were six sons to Ibrahim from the third wife, Qatura. So Bari Qatura, they are also. Then Ishaq had two sons, not only Jacob, but also Esau. Where has Esau gone? People don't know. Maybe the Brahmins and the Hindus of India, they are the progeny of Esau and the lost tribes of Bani Israel. Some of the tribes are not known where have they vanished. So because there are many similarities between the Jews and the Hindus and the Brahmins especially. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَجَعَلْنَا فِي زُرِيَتِهِ النُّبُوَةَ وَالْكِتَابَ وَعَتَيْنَاهُ أَجْرَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا And we gave him his reward in this world. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And verily, in the hereafter, he is from amongst our righteous people. وَلُوتًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ And we sent Lut also. And when he said to his nation, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَعْتُونَ no nation, no people before you have ever done this. Do you approach men for your sexual lust and you are breaking and you are cutting the way? Now this Taktauna Samil has been interpreted having two meanings. One is the spiel of procreation Allah has fixed. You have to procreate. So that is true. Male and female, both. If you give up the females, what will happen? The procreation would st stop. You will be finished. So what, this can be one meaning. That you are cutting that way, that road to procreation. And the second is that they used to loot and rob the travelers. To that extent that you commit these indecent acts in your society and assemblies. Looking at it. But there was no answer from his nation. But they said, bring the chastisement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are fed up with what you are, you know, sermoning us for so long a time. In Kuntamina Sadiqeen, if you are truthful, bring, bring to us the chastisement of Allah. Qad Rabbin Surni Al Qamil Fasiqeen. And he said, O oh my Lord, help me against these people who are corrupt. 
ولما جاءت رسلنا ابراہیم بالبشرا اینڈ وین اور میسنجرز دی اینجلز کیم ٹو ابراہیم گیونگ ہم دی گڈ گلیڈ ٹائٹنگز آف ہز سن دیٹ از اسحاق قالو انا مہلکو اہل هذه القريه دی ٹولڈ ہم ابراہیم دیٹ وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈسٹروائے دی پیپل لیونگ ان دس سٹی سوڈوم ان اہلها كانوا ظالمین ویریلی دی پیپل ہو لیو دیر دے ار ایول ڈوئرز قال ان فی ہا لوتا So Ibrahim was perturbed. If that whole city is going to be destroyed, Lut is there. In the Fiha Luta, in that city, dwells Lut also, alayhi salatu wa salam. Qalu nahnu alamu bi man Fiha. They said, we very well know who is there in that town. La nunajjiyan nahu ahlahu illa mraata. We shall definitely, surely deliver him and his family, except his wife, Qanat bin al-Ghabirin. Surely she is one of those who remain behind. When these messengers of ours reached Lut, see Abihim, he was distressed to see them. Why? They had come in the form of beautiful boys. And these, you know, homosexuals, they ran, you know, after them. For them, you know, so to say, it was a bliss. They had beautiful boys there. They could enjoy. Wazaka bihim zaran. And he felt fearful in his heart. Qalu la takhaf. The angels consoled him. Don't fear. Wala tahzan. And don't grieve. Inna munajjuka wa ahlaka. Illa mraataka. We are going to deliver you and your family except your wife. Qalat bin al-Ghabirin. She is one of those who will be lingerers behind. Inna munziluna ala ahli hadil qariyat rizam in as-samai bima kalu yafsukun. We are going to send down on the people living in this city a torment and scourge from the heaven because they have been transgressing. وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْنَا مِنْهَا آيَةٌ بَيَّنَةً لِقَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ And certainly we have left of that a clear sign for the people who understand because the ruins of this city used to be there, they were visible when the caravans used to go from Hejaz to Syria, the trade caravans, they, they used to pass by this Dead Sea, the coast of Dead Sea, and these cities were situated at the coast of Dead Sea, and now there are no remains, they have all been drowned in the Dead Sea. Waila Madian Akhahum Shu'aiba, and towards Madian, we sent their brother Shu'aib, فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَرْجُ الْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ And he said, O my people, worship Allah, and you should hope the last day, وَلَا تَعْصَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ And don't make any mischief in the land. فَقَزَّبُوهُ They belied him. فَأَخَذَتُهُمُ الرَّجْفَةُ So an earthquake took over them. فَأَصْبَعُوا فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاسِمِينَ And they became lying in their houses and dwellings dead. Wa'ad and Wa'samudah in the same way. What happened to Wa'ad and Samud? To Wa'ad, Hazrat Ehud was sent. To Samud, Hazrat Saleh. وَقَدْ تَبَيَّنَ لَكُمْ مِنْ مَسَاكِنِهِمْ And it, it has been evident to you that there lived the people of Wa'ad and here lived the people of Samud. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَعَبَالَهُمْ And Satan had made their bad deeds attractive and alluring for them. فَصَدَّهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ And he took them away from the right path. وَكَانُوا مُسْتَبْسِرِينَ Otherwise they were very worldly wise people. Worldly wisdom is something else. And real wisdom, to know the reality, that is something else. وَقَارُونَ وَفِرَعُونَ وَحَامَانَ In the same way, Qarun and Firaun and Haman. وَلَقَدْ جَاهُمْ مُوسَى بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Musa came to them with clear signs. فَاسْتَقْبَرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ so they became arrogant in the land. But they couldn't escape our grip. All of these nations we seized due to their sins. From among them were those on whom we sent a stone storm. And among them were those who were seized by a shout. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضِ And of them were those whom we made the earth to swallow. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَغْرَقْنَا 
and among those were those whom we drowned. The first and the last were drowned. The people of Nuh and Fir'aun and his armies, they were drowned. Rest, you know, they had different types of chastisements, either an earthquake or a rain of, of you know, stones from the heaven or something else. A shout, Seha. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَسْلِيَمَهُمْ Allah was not to do injustice to them. وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَسْلِيمُونَ But they were doing wrong to themselves. مَسَلُوا الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَا The similitude of those who take as protectors someone else than Allah. كَمَا سَلِي لَنْكَبُوتُ Their similitude is like that of a spider. اتَّخَذَتْ بَيْتَا a spider also builds the house. But verily, the weakest and the frailest house is the house of the spider. In the same way, they think that they have woven, you know, round them a system of beliefs which are mushrikana, where they associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other gods and goddesses. So they think that they are living in some place. We have, they have, we have something to believe. We have our own creed and our own dogma. But it's like the house of the spider. And these are the similitudes. We strike them for the benefit of the mankind. But none understands them but the learned one. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth. Bil haq. With truth. And it means with purpose. They are not in vain. They have been created with a definite purpose. Inna fi zalika la ayatan lil mu'mineen. And this is definitely a sign for the believers. Utlu ma uhiya ilayka. Now in the remaining three sections of this surah, two strands are interwoven with each other. Some ayat address the believers who are facing those hardships and problems which have been discussed in the first section. The other strand addressing the mushrikeen with whom this argument is going on in Makkah. So some ayat addressed to Mominin, some ayat addressed to the mushrikeen. Keep on reciting what has been revealed to you of the book. The first addressee is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and through him all his followers. If you want to, be, to persevere in these conditions, the strength you can take from recitation of Quran. Establish the prayer. Verily, this prayer forbids or restrains from indecency and evil. وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing. Greatest thing as what? As source of strength, courage and forbearance. If you remember Allah, He will give you the strength. He will give you the perseverance. You will be able to endure with patience. Number two, second instruction. وَلَا تُجَعَدَلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي يَحْسَنُ Don't debate or argue. Against the people of the book, but in the best way. Illa lazina zala mu'minhum, except those who are among them the evil doers. And what does it mean? Either don't even address them, don't talk to them. Kalu salama, pull salama, say salam. Or to such people you can be somewhat harsh also, if you find there is a need. Wa kulu and say. We believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us. And we believe in that also that was sent to you. We believe in Torah, we believe in, in the gospel, we believe in Zabur, the Psalms, we believe in all these things. And our Lord and your Lord is one. We are not worshipping someone else and you are not worshipping someone else. The only difference is that we have actually also surrendered to him. Whatever his commands, we have accepted. 
ومن هؤلاء من يؤمن به and from among these illiterate people who had no deen no book no sharia they also believe وما يجهد بآياتنا إلا الكافرون and our ayat are not rejected or denied except by the disbelievers وما كنت تتلو من قبله من كتاب oh Muhammad you didn't use to read any book before this ولا تخطه بيعينك and never You wrote anything with your hands. You are an unlettered person. Because he never learnt reading and writing. When the first wahi came, and Hazrat Jibreel said, Iqra, he said, I am man of Iqari. Read. He said, I am not a reader. So you never read any book before this. This Quran was revealed to you. You never wrote anything with your right hand. Izzal lartab al-mubtilun. In that case, there could be a room for doubts. With these deputiators, they could say he has been he's writing and he is practicing, you know, write, writing. So, in due course of time, now his faculty of writing, you know, has been polished and he is he is composing good pieces of literature. No, he never wrote a word. He never read a book. But who are you? You are not in the feast of the Lazina. But these are the clear ayat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the hearts. Of those self-evident signs in the heart of those, bal ho ayatun bi yunatun fi sudul ladina utul ilm who have been given knowledge. Wa ma yaj hado bi ayatina illa zalimun and none denies of revelations, but the unjust and evil-intentioned people. Wa karu laula undul alehi ayatun min rabbi and they say, why has not been a sign, a miracle sent on him from his Lord? Qul inna ma ayatu inda Allah say. All these signs and miracles are with Allah in His own hand. Wama wa in nama ana nazirum mubin. As for me, I am only a warner, clear warner. I don't say that I can do everything I like. No, I have never claimed to be God or Almighty. I am only a person like you, human being, mortal. But revelation has sent has been sent to me, and I have been appointed as a messenger to convey the message of Allah to you. اولم يكفي من ان انزل الله عليك الكتاب يتلى عليهم is it not sufficient for them that we have sent down a book on you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is being recited to them this is the biggest miracle you never wrote you never read and now you know you are reciting to them this beautiful the highest as the most beautiful piece of arabic literature Even the Jews up till today, even the Arab Christians up till today, they accept that this is the highest piece of literature of Arabic language. They read Quran in Hebrew universities, in Christian universities. Quran is the highest literature. They accept it. How could a person, illiterate person, unlettered person, who never wrote a word, who never read any book, so this is the miracle? Our language for him is this miracle not sufficient for them? ان في ذلك لرحمه ان في ذلك لرحمه وذكر لقوم يؤمنون surely in this there is a reminding and a mercy for those who believe قل كفى بالله بيني وبينكم شهيدا say allah is sufficient as a witness between you and me يعلم ما في السماوات والارض he knows whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth والذين امنوا بالباطل وكفروا بالله and those who believe in falsehood And disbelieve in Allah, Ulai kahumul khasirun. They are the losers. We just start jaluna ka bil azab, and they want that the azab, the chastisement, should come to them early. Bring the chastisement. Walau la ajalun musamma. Had there been not a time fixed for it, la jahumul azab, the chastisement should have come to them. Walayat yanna hum bakhtatan, but it will come to them. But suddenly, whenever it comes, wamla yashurun. 
while they will have no perception of it. Yastajanulaka bilazab, again repeating the same. They are making haste. Bring the chastisement to us. Wa inna jahannam ala muhitatum bil kafirin. And surely the hell, it has already encompassed them. The hell has encompassed them. They are not only feeling it. Just there is the dis distance. Yawma yakshahumul azab. The day when this chastisement would come and engulf them. Min faqihim. From above of them. Wa min tahti arjulahim. And from, also from beneath their feet. Wa yakulu zuku ma kuntum ta'maloon. And it will be said, now taste what you have been doing. Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu. Now again, turning to the believers. Oh, my bondsmen and servants. Ya ibadi alladheena amanu. Who have come to believe. In arzi wasi'atun. My earth is very broad, very spacious, very wide. Fayyaya fa'abudun. So only me you worship. This was an indication for the immigration to Abyssinia. If it has become very hard for you to live at Mecca and worship me, if you think now the persecution is becoming unbearable for you, leave Mecca. Don't get, keep tied to this land. You should be tied to Allah, not to any particular land or country or place. Ya ibadi Allah zina amanu. You have to worship me. If you can't worship me here, go to some other place. In the long run, every soul has to taste death. Summa turja'un. And then you will be returned to us. The death has to come. If Yasir and Sumayya radiallahu anhumah have been tortured and killed today, well, anyhow, they had to die. Maybe if Abu Jahl had not murdered them. They would have lived a few years more in this life. But the death had to come anyhow. كُلُّ نَفْسِ زَعَقَةُ الْمَوْتِ سُمَّ إِلَيْنَا يُرْجَعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُبَوِّيَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ غُرَفًا As for those who come to believe and do good deeds, we shall lodge them in lofty mansions of the garden. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ Underneath which rivers will be flowing. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Abiding therein forever. That will be a very good and excellent reward for those who do good deeds. Those who persevered, who bore all the hardships, who endured whatever came to them in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who passed successfully through all the tests and tribulations. And they had put all their faith and trust in their Lord. And there are so many animals you see. They don't carry their sustenance or food with them. Allah feeds them also. And he will feed you also. Don't fear. What you will eat, Allah will feed you. And he is all listening, all knowing. If you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? And created the sun and the moon? They, say, they will say, definitely, Allah. But from where are they being deluded? It is Allah who outspreads his food or his sustenance for his bondsman, for whomsoever he likes, and straightens or restricts it at his free will. Inna Allah bi kulli shayin alim. Verily Allah knows everything. Wala insaltu man nazala min samay man. And if you ask them, who has sent down this water from heaven? Fahiyah bi hilarda bin baadi mautiha. And then he had made, give given life to this land after it was dead. La yakulun Allah. Again they will say Allah. Qul alhamdulillah, bal aksarum la yaqilun. Say, all praise is for Allah, but most of them don't have the knowledge and they don't understand. وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْمٌ وَلَعِبٌ 
and the life of this world is nothing but an amusement and a play. It's like a drama. In a drama, in a picture show, somebody is a king. For three hours, he's a king. But after those three hours, what is he? Someone is beggar. But he is a beggar for those three hours only. After the show is over, he takes his sword robes away. And now he is a simple human being. So this is a drama going on. Allah has placed someone high, someone low. It's only for testing you. It's an amusement and a play. Verily, the life and house of the hereafter is the real life. This is not the real life. This is just the preface to real life. That you have a book, a very book, big book, but there is a small preface in the beginning. So this life of this world is like a preface to the book of real life. Only if they had known it. These things have come so many times. When they are embarking on some boats and ships, they keep on calling on Allah, praying Allah, and promising to obey Him exclusively. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers them to the safety and security of land when they start you know, declaring associates and, and equals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they should be ungrateful. But with what we have given them, they will give to their idols what we have given them. They are presenting as a present and gift to the idol. So that they may enjoy for some time. Very soon they will come to know the reality. Don't they see that we, may, we have made this sanctuary, this haram, a secure place, place of peace for them. And from around them people are snatched away. So do they believe in falsehood? And they are disbelieving the bounties of Allah. And who is more greater in evil? Except more than him who has concocted or forged a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or he belies the truth when it comes to him. The greatest sins are that somebody should say that I have received the revelation while no revelation has come to him. Or he refuses to accept the true revelation of a messenger. Both crimes are equal. Alaysafi Jahannam Maswar Lil Kafirin is not the hell a lodging for the disbelievers. Last ayah, most important and connected with the first section. As for those who strive in our way, we shall definitely show them our, our ways. We shall guide them. This is our firm promise with them. They should guard up their loins and start. We shall lead them. We shall hold their fingers and lead them to the paradise and heaven. And verily, indeed, surely, Allah is with those who do good deeds, who are excellent in their actions. Allahumma ja'alna minhum, Allahumma ja'alna minhum, Allahumma ja'alna minhum, ameen ya rabbal alameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakeem.